now, ladies and gentlemen, a program of opinion, Sports Wrap, with Ted Teeman. Don't hold your breath because Johnny Rogers has not arrived as yet. I've been informed that Johnny Rogers is on his way by taxi from downtown Montreal where he lives. And if it's disappointing for you, I'm very disappointed also. I don't know what went wrong, but it was laid on and Rogers is on his way. I cannot tell you what time in the next hour Johnny Rogers will be here. You're listening to Sports Wrap. I'm Ted Teven. And the numbers to call are 790-0933 and 6308611. If anybody's got a score with the Cardinal Braves game, an up-to-date score, if you happen to be listening to it, on one of those far-out radios from Metro Camera. If you can call it in, we'd appreciate it because that's an all-important situation now. If the Cardinals lose, they were losing 2 nothing to the Braves. Carl Morton on the mound pitching for the Braves. If the Cardinals lose with the Expos win this afternoon, happy days are getting a little closer. Anyhow, Johnny Rogers is on his way, I'm told. I feel very badly, as you all do, that he's not here right now. I'm not in a position to offer any excuses because I don't know what has gone wrong. Sports Wrap, you're on the air. Hello. Hello? Yeah, you're on the air, please. I don't know if you made up your mind about taking me to the football game. No, I haven't. You haven't yet? I haven't yet. Well, will you? Are you the guy that called last night? Yeah. You want me to take you to a football game? Uh, I take you. But I told you that I go with four or five people. What do you want to go to a game with me for? Well, you said to talk, uh, you know, about the Argonauts. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I don't see any way that you and I can get together because you've got two tickets. Yeah. And I'll be going with four or five people. Yeah. Well, I don't really see how, how you and I will be able to sit together, but we can talk about it right here. That's After that game is over. Is that cool? Hey. Is that cool? Yeah. That's okay? Yeah. Thanks for your call. Johnny Rogers is on his way. I repeat, I don't know what time he'll be here. And I'm only here for one hour. So keep your fingers crossed that that taxi cab will take him to CFOX directly, safely, not too swiftly because we're not looking for speed. I want him to get here. The numbers to call are 790-0933 and 630-8611. And you know that Mike Marshall did his thing again today. Torres was the winner. Big help from Mike Marvelous Marshall. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Okay, that's something that happens. You're on the air. Hello? Yeah. Uh, Ted? Yes, sir. I want to uh, ask one thing. Do you think that there's any one player in the major leagues that is more valuable than Mike Marshall? No, I don't at this particular moment. But do you think that he would win the most valuable player award? You see, we've been talking about this on Sports Wrap since June the 11th, praising Mike Marshall, right? Yeah, now, well, he's so good. He didn't even get on the All-Star team, but we knew better, didn't we? Of course. And right now, the rest of the National League is starting to sit up and say, hey, Mike Marshall, he's got to be something else. But we knew it, didn't we? And that's what riles me, because this is an expansion club that the others seem to overlook it. They don't expect solid material from an expansion club, do they? And I'm also mad about... My vote goes MVP Mike Marshall. As a matter of fact, you might be interested in this. Coming up in the next half hour, Ellie has an exclusive interview with Mrs. Nancy Marshall. And you'll hear Nancy Marshall talk about her husband in a completely different side of Mike Marshall. But his education and what he does in the offseason and so on. I've heard it. It's very entertaining. Next, go ahead. Uh, 
Also, I think Bob Bailey's having a better season than Ron Santo, but the fans of America just seem to overlook everything, and they pick the, their favorite. And uh, Bob Bailey is, is having a better season than Ron Santo. Well, I think it's pretty close with Ron Santo. Ron Santo is an established, established veteran who's done well year in and year out in the big time. He's a star. I don't know if we can make him a superstar yet, but he is a star. Well, if you look... Bailey is having a good year. Yes, and you can't take that away from him. Bailey is going to have his best year ever in the bigs. Better than 1970 when he hit 28 home runs. Okay, so that's all. Thank okay, you Okay, thank you for your call. I am told that Johnny Rogers is on his way to the sports rap microphone. We will wait and see what happens. It's beyond my control now, and of course yours. It's disappointing for you as it is for me. But we will wait, and hopefully Rogers will be here. And then we can get it strictly on football and the Montreal Alouettes and the CFL. The numbers to call are 790-0933 and 630-8611. Back to the line. Sports wrap. You're on the air. Hello, Ted. It's the Stallion calling. Yeah, how you doing? I'm fine, and how are you? Okay. I was expecting to talk to Johnny Rogers, but I... Uh, so was I. I, had else in mind. Uh, I sort of figured uh, I had a... That maybe uh, I could ask you a baseball question or, or make a comment. Well, this is it. This is your opportunity now. Yeah, but I'd also like to ask you a football question, you know, that I was going to ask Johnny Rogers. Well, uh... All right, go ahead. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, uh... And if it's too difficult, I'm going to save it for Rogers. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll ask you the football question first. Yeah. You know, the Expos, uh, I, I mean, the Alouettes... How do they get a player's rights? How do the CFL get an American player's rights? Uh, you know, I don't know how that happens. Do they have a draft or something? No, there's no American draft for the CFL. There is a college draft. I think you and I talked about this or somebody else about a week or two ago. And uh, there is no other draft than a Canadian college draft. In other words, you're wondering how the Alouettes got a hold of Johnny R? Right, like, you know. Okay, now I will not answer that question. Rogers will be here. And I'll throw that out for you, Stallion. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. I won't forget because that's a good question. It's not a difficult one to answer, but I would rather Johnny Rogers tell his story, how he came to the Alouettes. Okay. Can I comment on the Expos now? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's happening to them? Uh, you know, uh, they're getting the great pitching now from yeah. everybody, even Torres. Uh-huh. And and they're getting the clutch hitting. Yeah. Would, and because they're, they're not getting the hits they used to get, now they're just getting the clutch hitting. Yeah. And I, I I right now at this moment I realize that with the Alouettes going great, they have a, a, a great chance to win the Grey Cup. Canadians already won the Stanley Cup. We could have a triple championship in this city. It is a city of champions, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, mind-boggling. Stallion. Yeah. You're my man. Okay, I'm going to ask him that question. Okay, if, thanks a lot. If and when he gets here, thanks for your call. Bye-bye. Bye. The numbers to call are 630-8611 and 790-0933. And this is Sports Wrap. I'm Ted Teven. And uh, while we're waiting for Johnny Rogers, I have to tell you, those buses are rolling to Saratoga. You know Ron Turcott had five winners the other day? Yeah, I checked that out. Ron Turcott. Five winners and six mounts at Saratoga. It must be the mountain air, the Adirondack air or something. But I get back to those air-conditioned buses. If you go to gate number five at the bus terminus at Barry Street, there will be buses rolling again Saturday morning. Not tomorrow, but Saturday morning again to Saratoga. So for Saturday, they're asking you to be there before 9 o'clock at gate number five at the Barry Street bus terminus. Now, for reservations, to make sure that you have a seat or two or whatever you need, here's the number, 381-0261. 381-0261. And you'll get there in plenty of time. But the main thing is no parking problems. That a record crowd at Saratoga last Saturday. Those who went on these beautiful air-conditioned buses, and there were a lot of you, I'm told, at the time of your lives. A lot of you have never been to Saratoga before. There was one particular gentleman with his wife. Heard about it on this show. 
and told the tour organizer, why have I not been coming here for the past 10 years? Because it is beautiful, and it is. I'm not sending you there to gamble, to bet on horses. I'm telling you to go there and have one beautiful day. You have never, ever seen anything like Saratoga Racetrack. I don't care if you've been to Big A, Belmont, Hollywood Park, Santa Anita, Blue Bonnets. I don't care where you've been. You've never seen a more beautiful setting than Saratoga. And you can get there 381-0261, Saturday morning, Gate 5 on Berry Street. Back to the lines. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. I'm the Hawk fan who phoned the other night, and uh, I guess I disappointed you with my questions. So I'll try a little harder tonight. Okay. Um, you were talking last night to a gentleman about Henry Aaron. Yeah. And so I looked up some statistics on him. Uh-huh. And in 12 years that he played in Milwaukee, he hit 185 home runs in County Stadium, compared to 136 prior to this year in the launching pad. And his uh, career high was uh, 47 in 1971 but uh it's hard to believe but he didn't even lead the league when uh, Stargell hit 48 uh-huh he did the league the league however uh i think it was four times uh he did three times with uh 44 homers and i'd also like to uh dis- well, what do you think about all that you know they're all numbers but now give me your opinion on hank garen well right now i'm really happy that he's going after uh Blue's record. Well, that's what I want to hear, you know, whether you're happy or sad. It's too bad, though, and, uh, like, that he can't do it. Uh, it's doubtful he'll do it at Jerry Park. Well, no, I don't think he's going to break the record here because they're here the 17th, 18th, and 19th of this month. And, uh... How are they doing tonight? Do you know how, how that game is with the Braves and, uh, St. Right, Louis? It was, um, an American League score, so... Uh-huh. Well... Um, another thing I'd like to talk about, um... Uh, I'd like to disagree with the, um... Uh, point kid when he talks about Willie Mays you know I think it's a shame that Willie Mays is still trying to hang on because uh, the way he's playing this year when people look back at his career they're going to see his last year and uh, they're going to think well he certainly uh, hung on after he was uh, a real major leaguer well that's a good point but I think anybody who knows anything about baseball will ignore 1973 because this is not the Willie Mays. Did you hear a caller last night who yes. informed me that Willie Mays, I was sad. Well, I saw that game too, Ted. And what happened? Tell me that again. Uh, Willie Mays fielded a, a ball in the outfield. Mm-hmm. And uh, Stoke Theodore was over in the left field. Yeah. And he, um, knew, he couldn't throw the ball into the infield. And he threw it over to uh, Theodore to get it into the infield. And I think Theodore, uh, my personal opinion was that Theodore was so shocked at seeing the superstar, you know, couldn't get it in, that the ball just went right over his head. Doesn't that sadden you? Yeah. I think it's... Uh, it's just a, a, a sad, well, that's the only word, a sad, sad situation. It's, where uh, Willie Mays... It's really disappointing when you know... Uh, to say, hey, kid, cannot throw the ball at any given time. Of, uh, well, well definitely one infield. of baseball's uh, greatest all-time players. It really breaks me up because Willie Mays, as you have just said, has got to be one of the ten, one of the ten definitely. great all-time players who have ever played the game of rounders. Okay, thanks for your call. We're moving. The numbers to call here on Sports Wrap as we wait for Johnny Rogers, the incredible Johnny Rogers. I think he could run faster here than that taxi's bringing him. R6308611 and 7900933. Those of you who saw the game the other night at the Autostad, you weren't disappointed. There were 23,000 plus or something. Apparently it's larger than the crowds have been. Levy, the coach, Coach Marv Levy's put together a winner. Doesn't use Rogers all the time? Doesn't have to. He's got other guys who can carry the ball. But the people did come to see Johnny Rogers, no question about it. But you've got John Harvey, number 30. Cecil Bowens. Oh, they got some good ones. Smith. George Myra's been playing very well. I'm looking forward to the day when Jimmy Jones have to go in at quarterback. Back to the lines? Okay. You're on the air. Hello, Ted. Yeah. 
I had a few questions directed to Johnny Rogers, but think he's not there. I'll ask you a few baseball questions. Well, he will be here after. Uh, right. Number one, first of all, I saw your show last fall, and I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, on Channel 5, I think it was WPTZ on Sundays. Uh-huh, with Bob Perry. Yeah, right, Bob right. Perry. And uh, you know your sports very well. That's, I can compliment you on that. However, uh, you stated, I think, at that time, I'm going to prove you wrong right now anyways, because you had stated... First you flatter me, and then you shaft me. No, no, really. Uh, you had stated that, uh, I don't know, who your, I, what was your colleague's name again? Bob Perry. Uh, right, Bob Perry stated that the Expos were a contender this year, whereas you stated they were not. And I, uh, to my recollection, you had put down Gene Mock indirectly. True or false? Not indirectly at all. Or directly. Directly true. True. In other words, uh, Bob Perry has stated that they had a tremendous pitching staff. Bob Perry is a fan of Gene Mox, and he's entitled to be, and has been for a long time, and I haven't been. Right, okay, you haven't been. <coughs> uh, do, you, do you still feel that way? Oh, yes. Eh? Yes, because I feel that right now, and I discussed this with the beautiful Ann Mendelson about 9 o'clock earlier this evening, right. and she seemed to agree with me. She's a pretty astute observer of baseball. She happened to agree with me. I don't think that man for man, the Expos have to take a back seat to any other club in their division. I agree with you. You know that? I so agree. therefore, all I have said is this, to get the record straight in your mind, because it's very clear in mine. Jim Fanning, general manager of the Montreal Expos, has made many astute trades. He has provided the field manager, Gene Mock, with the players. You've just agreed with that that they have the players, they don't have to take a back seat in very many positions to any other club in their division, right? Right. Now what I'm saying and have said is if Mock cannot do the job, then there's something very wrong because Fanning has provided him the horses, the players, the troops. But the personnel. Right, the personnel. That's a word I haven't used yet. Right. Now, is there anything the matter with that? No, okay, well, I'll agree with you on that point. You don't have to, but... I, I will, I will. My opinion. You seem to be very knowledgeable. Now, I'd like to, uh, first of all, I think, number one, Johnny Rogers has to be the greatest thing the CFL has ever had. He's got to be the... I mean, he's making the CFL this year, in my opinion. Well, I haven't seen every game in the CFL since its inception, but, uh, my God, what, what, what Rogers has shown and the way he's being utilized by Marv Levy is extraordinary. This this guy is being utilized, used properly by a knowledgeable coach, a man with great experience. I would say a little more than knowledgeable. Right. In my opinion. Okay, throw me out another adjective. Right, put it this way. I have actually, I have been following the Alouettes for many years right now. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, when I saw the green and white game, mm -hmm. just the performance, mm -hmm. the personnel that he had in the green and white game told me that they were going to be a winner this year. Whereas all my fellow colleagues laughed at me. They uh, said, you're red and white in exhibition and whatnot. No, no, you were right. You were right. You could see it. So I think Levy is a genius, utilizing the personnel he has. Do they have to win the Great Cup for Levy to remain in your good books? Definitely not. I'm with you. In my opinion, they don't have to win the Grey Cup. I'm with you. As long as he produces a winner during the season, I think he's done a fantastic job. Yeah, I don't think we have to put the pressure on Levy and his 32-man roster. Hey, what do you think about that trade for Steve Smear to the... I thought it was a steal at the time. I, I said Smear, in my opinion, Smear is a great ball player, but I felt he was a little overrated, whereas Lester himself has proven to be a great player in the last five years, in my opinion. Have you been listening... Uh fairly regularly to this particular program? No, I haven't. As a matter of fact, uh, I had just tuned in. This is the first night I have tuned in uh, due to a friend telling me that the, the show was on. I, I, was, I was not aware of this particular show. All right, sir. Well, let me repeat for your benefit that when that trade was announced, right. I went on record as saying that Marv Luster is the type of player right. that they need back in Montreal. He proved it. As a matter back of Back home again comes Marv Luster. Thank you very much. If I, if I recall, he used to be a flanker for us. That's right. And uh, he was a fair ball player at that time, and I was very disappointed to see him go, uh, in my personal opinion. And I, I think another steal was the fact that we got Glenn Weir from our Cosmos. Yeah, Weir. Weir is something else. Cosmos is a pretty good ball player. But you notice one thing. I would say we have a Canadian for an import. And uh, what is he, 22 years old, Weir? Yeah. And uh, from watching the games, he's impressed me immensely. Really, he has. You notice the various formations that Marv Levy has set up. He's got Rodgers going at split end. 
Right. And then Rogers comes in another position. Yeah. And you've got Dallariva tight end. Right. And Brian Jack can come in at any time at either split end or tight end. You are correct. Braggins can come in for Randall. Bonnet comes in for Braggins. Bonnet can come in at center for Conrad. Bonnet for George, although... You know, George, he's something else. I, I thought he actually put Hamilton to shame in the first game by bringing fellows in like, we'll say, Mike Maloney, Larry, uh, Buono. Yeah, uh, I haven't come to him yet. And then you've got... His personnel, the first game against Hamilton, he was actually putting them to shame. And then you've got Yoakum at left tackle. Okay, in my opinion, uh, and quote me here, he is going to be, this year, the most outstanding offensive lineman in the CFL. I couldn't agree with you more. And you, you've just been quoted. You're on record right now. Keep putting me on record. Okay, now you see if if anything happens to Yoakum at any given time, Ed George can come in there at left tackle. That's the way Levy has got all this set up. You're now you got Evan Shin and then you got Allen right near him. He's got everything marked here, even who the holders are for field goals. You're 100% correct. Uh, let, uh, let me put another point across to you. Now you saw Harvey perform, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Now he is a fair ball player, in my opinion. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a little better than average player. Yeah. But you must admit. Uh, the uh, offensive line made him look a little better than what I think he really is. Well, the offensive line is really good, and they're there to do that job. I saw a block. Me. Can I uh, can I interrupt for a moment? Go ahead. It puzzles me. I have watched Cecil Bones, and I feel that the ball is not being given to Cecil Bones as much as I would like it to be given to him. Uh, I feel he's giving the ball more to Larry Smith, whereas I feel he should be giving it to Bones, because I think Bones is a little better runner than Smith. Well, we'll wait and see. What... Uh what I did want to mention to you, and uh, let's let's keep track of that Bo and Smith situation I'm because not putting, I'm not taking anything away from Smith. Uh, I mean, I, I think he's a, a great ball player as far as Canadians go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I feel that Cecil has impressed me more and more every game since since I saw the green and white game for all the exhibition games up to even uh, what it was Tuesday's game. He has impressed me more every game as a ball player and a blocker. I think you're right there. Now, Rogers impressed the people so much when he threw a block. Did you see that? With a block on? Did you see a block that he threw? Wells. He threw it on Wells. Yeah, was it on Wells? That well, it was on Wells. I saw it because I was right on the 40-yard line. Were you? Huge guy. That, anyway, that... He spun, Johnny Rogers spun Wells up in the air, and Myra got that pass away. And, sir, let me tell you something now. Johnny Rogers has just walked into our sports rap microphone, and I'm glad you're still on because you've got a couple of questions. But hold on for a minute. I want to say hello to Johnny myself. Johnny, I'm glad you're here, oh, my man. man. Nice to be here, kid. I had a friend of mine who was supposed to bring me up here earlier, and I haven't been able to find him, and uh, I don't really know Montreal well enough to get here by myself. I never would have found it. Sir? Yes? Okay, you've got a couple of questions for Johnny R. He's right here, and let me thank Peter Michaels for doing his thing. He went right out there to wait for that taxi cab. So this was a real team effort here. Go ahead, sir. You're on the air with Johnny Rogers. Johnny? Yeah. yeah first of all, I heard some comments on the post-game show, which had quoted the saying, you are an ordinary superstar. Well, in my opinion, from watching you in college ball, as well as in professional ball this year, you are a super superstar. <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I just, uh, I feel I would like to be a super superstar, but I, I feel I'm just ordinary, really. And, uh, no, I feel that I should be confident. I don't want to be overconfident, but I feel I should have a lot of confidence in myself, or else how can I expect the fans to have confidence in me? I have to agree with you. What makes you the superstar is your gut and determination. Whereas I will take an example of a, of a player who has a lot of ability, and Leon McQuay of the Toronto Argonauts, who I don't know if you've watched him in the past. I, I don't think you, you know him too well. But he has tremendous ability. However, he does not have the desire or the determination as a player like yourself. And he, he cannot be categorized in your category. You are simply a superstar. Oh, thank you very much. Sir, I thank you for your call, and I'm glad that you found out that this show is on the air now, and you were on the air at the right time to talk to Johnny. Thanks very much. By the way, any, anytime you'd like to come up for supper, you're welcome. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Do that. Johnny. I guess that was quite a hectic taxi ride. Oh, it was quite a ways, too. I live out on uh, Nuns Island. Uh -huh. that, that seems to be a ways from here. Well, we're, we're very, very happy that you're here. And uh, a lot of people have been saving questions for you. Let me throw this one out that a regular caller stallion. wanted to... Yeah, the, st the stallion? Yeah, the stallion. Oh, you were listening in the car, right? Yeah, I was listening on the way out. No, what is the answer to that? How, how do American football players arrive in Canada? 
Well, uh, they have a Canadian uh, draft list that they have. They don't have the regular draft where they put in the paper or whatever. They do that with the Canadian football players in colleges. And uh, they just have a list that uh, a lot of the teams just agree on that they get, you know, they just start picking. And they just, uh, I was, I've been on the Montreal Alouettes uh, draft list for about two years now. When I was a junior in high school, when you're a junior, I'm junior in college, excuse me. When you're junior in college, you're able to, uh, a lot of, like, uh, Leon McCoy, I think, left when he was a sophomore or junior, and a lot of football players that are, who can't make the grades a lot of times come up a little earlier. But uh, it's, it's more or less, um, it's outside the, the NFL draft, but it's given the type of a buffer where you have a NFL-AFL merger, except for it's the CFL now, and it's, uh, I think in the future it's going to really provide a better opportunity for football players uh, that can't get the monies that they want in the AFL to have an opportunity to really get maybe what they feel that they're worth in the CFL. Well, John, Montreal, and I think all of Canada is so glad that you're here in the CFL because now, and I've heard this mentioned before, some American ball players will come up here and they'll say, where do you play? CFL. And they'll say, oh, isn't that, isn't that the league where the Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers is, so you've added a certain, if you'll excuse the play on words, luster mm -hmm. to the CFL. Okay, let's take some calls, and let's try to make them as brief as possible so that as many people as possible can get on with Johnny Rogers. You're on the air. Hello, Ted. Yeah. Can I speak to... Uh... Yes, go right ahead, please. I'm right here. Um, when Sonny Wayne gets uh, off the critical list, day and he's playing for the Alouettes, I... Do you think he'll be playing as a quarterback when he gets out? Uh, you said Sonny Wade? Yes. Uh, I really don't know uh, what they plan to do with Sonny. Sonny started working uh, out with us again today, and uh, it seems, uh, he seems to have was gotten over his stomach injury, and uh, he's throwing the ball good and all. But George Meyer is really doing a heck of a job, and they feel that Jimmy Jones is a heck of a quarterback too, but they haven't had a chance to use him. So I don't know really what type of an adjustment period that Sonny might go through, have to go through, before they decide to use him. Yeah, because I think, you know, George Meyer, Meyer is doing a real terrific job right now. And, you know, I think uh, he should stay there for a while before they put Sonny Wade on. Okay, sir, I thank you for your call. And let's try to keep the more directed to Johnny Rogers himself rather than the policies of the Alouette Football Club. Let's go to this line, Johnny. You're on the air with Johnny Rogers. Good. Yeah. I thought the Superfly, please. You've got him right here. Superfly. Right on. Yeah, what's happening? You got it. Who, who, who are you? What's your name? You know me. From Nebraska? From Nebraska? Yeah. Oh, you have to tell me your name. I don't know voices. Marty. Who? Marty. Marty? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know Marty. Okay, okay, anyways, listen. Okay, yesterday I was having a discussion with Ted Keevan, right? Right. Turning drugs and sports. Now, you're here. I want to ask you some questions about this. All right, go right ahead. Okay, first of all, is, is it really a serious problem in the uh, professional football? Is it really a serious problem, drugs? Like well, a lot of players take, taking it or what? Well, uh, I think uh, drugs is the problem, but I think it depends a lot on uh, the location of the team, on how easy drugs are to get or how the community is around this thing. I don't think that, you know, you'd be more geared to have a lot of drugs in places like New York and... Uh, in uh, L.A. or whatever, like like on the coast and whatever. And I don't think that a lot of athletes uh, really take as many drugs as people claim them to take because I don't feel that, I think that an athlete has to be mentally sharp as well as physically sharp, and I feel that drugs take this away from him, and this is his way of making his living. If he, I don't think he would intentionally take this away from himself. So I can't really think that it would be as serious as they say it is, yet... You know, it's a lot of talk about it. Now, they're talking to the NFL that uh, players are going to be taking your analysis test this year. How would you feel about that in the CFL? They're going to be taking knowledge tests? No, no. your analysis. Your analysis? Well, I, I think that would be that would be just fine. Um, that, I suppose that would be a lot better than just having to go around people who are talking about it and not really knowing because I think that that would clear up the whole thing for once and for all because I don't really think that a good athlete can participate and uh, indulge in drugs and then still go out and do a give a 100% job on the football field. I heard an interview with uh, O.J. Simpson and Larry Brown. They said that they wouldn't like to be treated like horses. How do you feel about that? Well, that's pretty much the same way. I, you know, that's, uh, some people might have drinking problems, but I don't think that, uh, that they would dig that back into their, prob in their private lives and, and check out their drinking problems. And uh, other people might have certain pro different problems, and it might be just only a few, but 
I don't really think uh, football, when you come to football to play on Saturdays and you play on Saturday, what you do on Monday and Tuesday is not really the people who you entertain on Saturdays, really uh, personal affairs. Uh, I know you were drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers. What made you choose uh, football over baseball? Well, I didn't really choose football over baseball at the time. I just decided that I, I would go to school, and if uh, something was to happen, if they were, if I was good enough for them to draft me at baseball out of high school, okay. then I, I felt that if I went to school and played uh, good baseball in college and I played football, that since we didn't have the AFL merger, that at the time I was thinking that I could merge, uh, have a merger between the baseball league and the football league and come up with more money. But as it was, uh, I had to drop baseball along the way because we had spring practices which, which coincided with the baseball season, and I had to really pick football. But instead of having baseball as the merger, I came up with the CFL. Now, a serious Marty, 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 are you there? Yes. Marty, are you the guy that...